Today's episode is brought to you by Gem Accessories. Gem Accessories is one of the leading accessory manufacturers within the trading card game space. Known for their deck boxes, Gem also has an amazing lineup of binders, backpacks, and more. Some of our personal favorites include the new KLRZ Icons deck boxes, the Secrets binder, and the Jaguar and Puma backpacks. But don't just take it from us, check out some of these reviews on screen. For all of these amazing products and more, be sure to check out Gem Accessories using the link in the description down below or on Twitter at xgemaccessories. Again, the description down below or on Twitter at XGEM Accessories. Hello, everybody, and welcome into today's episode of the Top Cut Yu-Gi-Oh! podcast. My name is Sunny. I'm here with my co-host, Caleb. Hello. And for all of our YouTube watchers, I'm sorry about the camera angle. I'm working on it. I was trying to do something different with the camera this time, yep. and then it started getting late, and I was like, okay, we need to start recording, so here we are. But hopefully the camera angle will be fixed next time, because... <laughs> I'm not get, I'm hopefully I'm getting better at this, but it's not coming quick. So yeah. Uh, with that said, of course, we want to thank you all so much for joining us today on this wonderful Friday morning. So, uh, of course, we do want to thank all of our wonderful sponsors. So a huge thank you to Gem Accessories as well as Millennium Threads. Also want to thank Steel Fox Games in Shreveport, Louisiana, as well as ETB Games in Alexandria, Louisiana, for their continued support. Now. Of course, we want to also make sure that you know to check out our Dragon Shield affiliate link, which is in the description down below. With all of that said, let's jump right on into it. Heck yeah, we got a bunch of new cards. Yeah, we have a ton of new cards to talk about today. Uh, and keep in mind, most, not all, but most of the new cards that we're talking about today are releasing in Animation Chronicle 2023. Yeah. And with that those cards are going to be released in battles of legend now when cards get released in battles of legend here what that generally means or when the animation cards generally get released in battles of legend which normally we've been getting that set in like i mean last year we got crystal revenge in december yeah and <clears throat> now we're getting though we're getting it in june yeah which means a lot of these cards in theory we should be getting and should be legal for nationals this year so definitely something to keep an eye out oh on. yeah key term in theory but I, I think we should start with the uh 25th anniversary 10 yeah sure sure, sure uh so I'll, so we got what the 10 looks like um and there are gonna be quarter century rares so we know what some of them are uh the cards that we know that will be quarter century rare in this set are dark magician exodia the forbidden one just as head uh, Red Eyes, Black Dragon, Rainbow Dragon, Cyber Dragon, lots of dragons. Uh, Elemental Hero, Neo, Salaman, Great Blaze Dragon, and Firewall Dragon. Lots of, lots of, lots of dragons. So, if I'm not mistaken, everything that we see on the, uh, everything that we see on the tin should be available in the tin as a quarter, quarter century, yeah, quarter yeah. century secret, right? Yeah, yeah, which is like all the protagonists, like main boss monsters yeah like main boss monsters plus like a couple of random ones like exodia and red eyes which to be fair exodia could technically be like it could technically be considered yugi's first boss monster yeah you could say that um and then red eyes was really net was used by joey but was still like you know on par with blue eyes and dark magician kind of right right now something worth noting is that these quarter century secret rares look almost exactly the same as a starlight rare it's just that they have a little 25th anniversary stamp on the bottom in the text box so yeah, which is cool and if you do want to see what those look like then you can for sure check out the reveals that just came earlier this week on wednesday mm -hmm. on the mst.tv channel as well as rev uh, revz cards and maybe one or two i know there was a few more but they all pulled some quarter century secret rares out of the legendary collection rewave legendary yeah. 25th legendary collection whatever they're <clears throat> calling it so now i know that they pulled some slifers and obelisks yeah so 
definitely check out those videos if you want to see what the new rarity looks like. I think it looks pretty sick, mm -hmm. but there are people upset about Exodia specifically getting a 25th anniversary secret rare because it just got a starlight rare. Yeah. How do you feel about that, Caleb? I'm neutral. I'm just like, whatever. It's The whole thing is just uh, collection bait, so... That's it, true. It's le the, like, the, like, it's less for the in, the average player, more for the collector, which I'm like, that's fine. It's whatever. Fair, fair. So, I am... I'm, I'm kind of sad that they did it with Exodia specifically. I think that there are other cool cards that I would like to see get this new rarity, and... Mm -hmm. There's a ton of cards that I would like to have as a basically a Starlight Rare. Yeah. So, and, but I do think that if you want any of these cards, you should pick them up very close to release because I don't see these things doing, depending on what the release price is, right? If they're all yeah. releasing at like 10 bucks, that's a good price to get them at. But if they're releasing at a hundred, don't, I would wait. Yeah, just don't. Particularly because like the only, like of that list I just gave, um, the only one that I could foresee ever using is Firewall Dragon. Uh, Dark Magician and Red Eyes. Fair enough for uh, Dragoon. Yeah, Dragoon packages. Which is, oddly enough, all out of favor. D doesn't mean it won't circle back around and come back. I'll tell you, I can tell you why. Why? Three words. Huh. No Verte Anaconda. That's fair, because now you have to hard, dry, dry, hard draw the Red Eyes fusion. Right, and then you still have to play the bricks with it, too. Yeah. So... Unless you're doing some weird polymerization deck, which is feasible now, strangely enough. It's weird. Yeah, we'll see how that goes. It feels weird saying polymerization is almost good now. Maybe. Because you can because you can search it so easily and recur one copy of it over and over and over again and just keep Now, what I would like to see is the alt art for polymerization getting a oh my uh, god yes getting this rarity that'd be yes very cool. oh that'd be great the good art of poly yeah also before we go any farther uh, i do want to take just a moment to say if you are a youtube watcher i would like some feedback on the thumbnails because i've been doing work trying to get better at yeah, them and yeah yeah I'm, I'm really happy with how far they've come but you know feedback is cool no oh, yeah uh constructive feedback please yeah uh, so, I guess we should start with the actual new cards with the Free Agents for, for Duelist Nexus. Yes. So, starting with Behemoth, the King of All Wars. This is a level 10 Earth Beast effect monster. 2,700 attack, 1,500 defense. You can normal summon or set this card with one tribute. One. If Why not just make it level 6? I, I don't know. One, if this card... They probably didn't want it. They probably didn't want it to be... Um, bait for like uh like a synchro targets and stuff like that you know what I, you know what i think it is huh because i think it's a retrain of an older behemoth i can't think of what the card is actually called and he was level 10 ah uh, okay i think that's what that's why gotcha. he's level 10. if this card is normal or special summoned you can target one beast beast warrior or winged beast monster in your graveyard add it to your hand and if you do this card loses 700 attack yo i dig that yeah Two, if this normal summoner set card or this normal summoner set card is unaffected by activated effects from special summoned monsters. Three, once per turn during your end phase, you can make this card gain 700 attack. Yo, it just if you only if you only do his first effect once. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, actually, I didn't see a once per turn anywhere on this card. I mean, like, if you can normal, if you can special summon it another time. No, 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 because it's, I don't think it's first line. It's first effect is not once per but turn. But it's on normal or special. It's on normal or special. Got yeah. it. So it is once per turn, quote unquote. Yeah. yeah gotcha, gotcha. I was looking specifically for once per turn. Uh, next up, we have Magnum the Reliever, a level cool 8. Cool name. Huh? Cool name. I know, right? Uh, level 8 Light Fiend Fusion Effect Monster. Light Fiends are cool. 2,800 attack, 2,000 defense. Materials, because it's a fusion. A monster special summon from the extra deck, plus one monster in the hand. You can only use the first and second effect of this card's name each once per turn. One, you can target a polymerization spell or a bump fusion spell in your graveyard. Put them on the bottom of the deck and then draw a card. Two, when another card's effect is activated, quick effect, you can banish a polymerization spell or fusion spell from your graveyard. Target one card on the field, destroy it. It's such a shame that they forgot to put hero in this card's name, therefore uh, making it useless. No. 
because doesn't um guardian chimera require re- require pol- polymerization no. as well no um, it if polymerization is in your graveyard he can't be targeted got it got it so he he gets bone yeah it's just more benefits for actually utilizing polymerization to be fair I think right now the only way to search polymerization is with fusion sage and the spell card and keeper of dragon magic no there's other ways fair enough there because i know also it doesn't necessarily mean just polymerization it's polymerization or a fusion spell card yeah no there's definitely other ways to search polymerization they're not coming to me off the top of my head but i know there are other cards that specifically deal in polymerization uh i know there's some uh some uh heroes that specifically search out polymerization and then let you i don't think they'll let you recycle it though but i know they'll let you search it out bare minimum um but like why would you Mm, let me see like why would you run a hero package and not just run the full full full-on hero deck you know what i mean so i'm looking specifically for a couple of cards that i know that do this so I'm thinking Fluffle Bear. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let you add polymerization from your graveyard to your hand. Mm. Mm, Fluffle Cat does the same thing. Uh, Fluffle Dolphin. If it's into the graveyard sewage material, you can shuffle into the deck one of your polymerizations that's banished in your graveyard. Okay. So, like a lot of the Fluffles have car- have things that interact. Fusion Recovery. Uh, that also adds it from your uh, fight for patchwork. That's what I'm thinking. That's oh. what I've been thinking. Okay, so pa- patchwork is search for polymerization. Add one edge imp monster and one polymerization from deck to hand. You do you search for both. But then you also have to have an edge imp package in there too, which isn't the, a, war, a bad thing because that gives you the the monster in your hand. Right, and also fusion recycling plant. Ooh, right. Just once per turn, discard a card, add polymerization from deck to hand. Yeah, that's a field spell. Yes. Yeah, so you can search the search with with terraforming. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's it, there. There are definitely more ways to search. Yeah. Fusion substitute is all. Well, I guess that's just always polymerization. Yeah, interesting. S- still, there are definitely there are ways. ways. Anyway, next we have Gaia Blaze, the Force of Blazing Sun. Oh, the new the next card is really cool. Uh, level seven Fire Pyro Synchro Effect Monster. 2600 attack, 2100 defense. Materials, one tuner, one or more non tuners. So it's generic. Mm-hmm. One, when this attacking card destroys an opponent's monster by battle, you can activate its effect. This card can make a second attack in a row. Two, at the end of the battle phase, you can target fire monsters in your graveyard up to the number of monsters this card destroyed by battle this turn. Add them to your hand. Interesting. Potentially cool. It's not awful. It's also not good. Yeah. Uh, next up, we have uh, Thelematech Kratos. Rank 8 Dark Spellcaster Exceeds Effect Monster. 3,000 attack, 900 defense. Materials, 2 level 8 monsters. Generic. Uh, can only use the second effect of this card's name once per turn. 1. Each time your opponent activates a trap card or effect, or a monster effect, this card gets a spell counter. Maximum 9? When it resolves. That's weird. Uh, 2. You can remove 3 spell counters, apply one of these effects... Add a spell or spellcaster effect monster from your deck. Any spell or a spellcaster effect monster from deck to hand. Special summon a spellcaster monster from your hand de- hand or deck. Three. If this card would be destroyed, detach one instead. Ooh, shame. So close to being good. All it needed to be was to be level seven. Oof. Next we have Hold on. Eagle Morph. Translator notes are quick. Thelema is a ma- is the magical system of Alistair Crowley. Kratos is Latin for Weaver. All right. Cool. Next, we have Ego Morph. This is a quick play spell card. You can only activate one card with this card's name per turn. One- the, art- the artwork on this thing is a JoJo reference, and it's amazing. I don't... I guess. I feel like it's just a retrain of Ego Boost. Uh, it's you- the dudes from Ego Boost. Yeah. You can only activate one card with this card's name per turn. One, at the start of the damage step, if, you're a po- if your monster battles an opponent's monster, activate one of these effects. Change the attacking monster to defense position... Two, return the attack target to the hand. Or three, destroy both battling monsters. Ooh. Actually, I'm looking at it. Hold on. Yeah, they're doing JoJo poses. That's funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like he's doing Josuke's 
point, but like from a different angle. Yeah, I never would have picked up and on he's that. Doing the, and then the dude's doing the pillar man hand in front of face pose. For those of you who, who don't understand what I'm talking about, just go look at the card. You'll see what I mean. Uh, lastly, lastly, we have Opposing Mirrors of the Underworld, Normal Trap. You can only activate one card with this card's name per turn. One, when you take damage from an opponent's attack or card effect, apply the effect based on the type of damage. Battle. Special summon a monster from your graveyard with attack equal to or lower than the damage you took. And if you do, the battle phase is ended after the damage step. Effect. Inflict twice that damage to your opponent. He's bad. It's it's bad, but funny. Uh, particularly if you're if you're about to go into time and your opponent makes Gaga Ga Cowboy and you're and they're like, effect, cool, you take double. What we gonna do about it? What you gonna do about it? <laughs> you just made cowboy and activated effect. You didn't bother putting anything to stop my trap card, my guy. My and you, guy. And you just took sixteen hundred damage. Thanks. All right. Next we have da 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 the volcanics. Woo! They erupt S after a long slumber, apparently. Yep. So, uh, huge shout outs to Payne for making this happen. Literally. Uh, it only took him four and a half years, almost five years, 1,505 days of requesting volcanic support. And hey, we got it. Huge shout outs. Um, thank you, Konami, for waiting until after I got my ulti shells. I appreciate you. Volcanic fans are finally free from the prophecy of 3,008 days ago. Yep. All right. So, Volcanic Emperor, level eight fire pyro effect monster, 3,100 attack, 2,400 defense. Cannot be normal summoned or, spit or set. Must be special summoned from your hand or graveyard by banishing three pyro monsters or one blaze accelerator card from your face up field and or graveyard. You can only special summon volcanic emperor once per turn. One, when summoned this way, you can inflict 500 damage to your opponent for each of your pyro monsters currently banished. Then you can set one volcanic trap directly from your deck, except volcanic eruption. Two, each time your opponent special summons a monster, monsters inflict 500 damage to them. Note, legal targets for its uh, search effect are Volcanic Inferno and Volcanic Recharge. Because all Volcanic Eruption is not a Volcanic ca trading card in the OCG. So they're probably going to errata Volcanic Eruption and change its name. Oof. So, next up we have Volcanic Trooper, level 3. Fire, Pyro, Effect, Monster, 1,000 Attack, 1,000 Defense. You can only use the first and second effect of this card's name each once per turn. One, if this card is normal or special summon, add a Volcanic card from deck to hand, except another copy of itself or Volcanic Eruption. Two, you can discard one card, special summon a Bomb Token. A py pyro, Fire, Level 1, 1,000 Attack, 1,000 Defense to your opponent's field. When the token is destroyed, its controller takes 500 damage. Okay. Interesting. You want to get the next one or should I get it? Next one is Volcanic Rimfire, which is either in a funky pose with an alien mouth or eating its own tail. We're not sure. No, it's in a funky pose. No, it's in like a... It has an alien mouth. It doesn't have eyes. But like it has two heads. No. It, that... Its tongue has a mouth. No, that's a crest. Yes, I can see it too. This... That is a crest. Is a second mouth. Anyway, all right. Volcanic Rimfire. Level one fire pyro effect monster. 300 attack, zero defense. <clears throat> one, if this card is sent to the graveyard, you can activate one of these effects. Banish this card from your graveyard, and if you do, send one volcanic monster from your deck to your graveyard, except Volcanic Rimfire. Two, banish one blaze accelerator card from your hand, or I'm sorry, excuse me. From your face-up field or graveyard, and if you do, place one Blaze Accelerator Continue Spell Trap from your hand or deck face-up in your spell and trap zone. You can only use each effect of this card's name once per turn. I guess that this is almost like a retrain of Shell. It's, it's, yeah, it's weird. Yeah, it's weird. It's a weird one, for sure. Uh, next up, we have Volcanic Blaze Cannon. Oh, since your name is TCG Translation, should be Volcanic Blaze Accelerator. Continuous spell card. Activate this card by sending a blaze accelerator from your hand deck or graveyard or face up field to the graveyard. Or you can just set it off of Rimfire's effect. Either way it works. One, you can only control one volcanic blaze accelerator. 
Two, once per turn, you can special summon a volcanic monster from your hand. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Three, once per turn, you can target a face-up monster your opponent controls. Send a level one pyro monster from your deck to the graveyard, and if you do, destroy the target. That's pretty good. It's usable, I guess. Um, the targeted destru did the did the destruction really have to be targeted? Um, do you if, would it break the well? No, it might actually. Because then you can send, send like shell, and then have another shell in your hand, and then things kind of go a little haywire from there. <clears throat> yeah. I don't know. Also, it, it, it's a really good card. It lets you do a lot. Also, hilariously, no, all, none of these are our hard ones return because you can only get, you can only uh, control you can only control one copy of it. Yeah. All right. Next, we have fire ejection. This is a normal spell card. You can only activate one card with this card's name per turn. One, send one pyro monster from your deck to your graveyard. Then, if it is a volcanic monster, you can apply one of these effects. Inflict damage to your opponent equal to its level times 100. Special summon one bomb token. Fire pyro level one, 1,000 attack, 1,000 defense to your opponent's field. When this token is destroyed, its controller takes 500 damage. Uh, no, this is referencing a scene from Axel's first duel with Jaden, where he used uh, one of his spell cards to just shoot uh, Jaden's Percentatrix out of the sky. Oof. Which is why in the card art, it's per Percentatrix getting shot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. Lastly, we have Volcanic Inferno, which is a new trap card. Uh, continuous trap. You can only use the first and second effect of this card's name each once per turn. One, your, when your opponent activates a monster effect on the field, banish a pyro monster from your graveyard, burn your opponent for 500. And if you and if you banish a volcanic monster, negate the activated effect. Two, during your opponent's end phase, you can target up to two of your volcanic monsters that are banished or, and or in your graveyard, put them, on, put them back on the bottom of the deck in any order. That's really good. Yeah, it is. It's once per turn negate by banishing, but then it just puts two back at the end of each of your opponent's turns. Yeah, I know. This card's crazy. Yeah. I, I would say that for what people would have been expecting for volcanic support, these cards are insane. These yeah. feel so incredibly pushed. But also, they seem a little not enough at the same time. You know what I mean? No, I, I think these are enough. Like, this deck's good now. Really? You think so? Yeah, for sure. I don't know. Like, I would love to see this deck be, like, an actual threat contender. Uh -huh. But, like, unfortunately, my brain immediately goes, oh, it's Pyro, Fire, so they can run Rivalry and goes and match. Not care. But then they're also really done over by Tikaboo. Um, to be fair, I'm also not full on, like, fully... I don't have like a full understanding of how the rest of the how the old volcanic stuff works outside of like shell, because mm -hmm. I was like actually used in other stuff. And then my brain also wants to use rekindling, but none of them are none of these new cards are rekindling targets. Yeah, because none of them have two hundred defense. Why? So, I um, I really think that this deck. Uh, so I. Okay, I'll come clean. Uh, I watched MBT's video that he did when he reacted to this. Okay. And I think that he did a very good job of kind of setting the expectation for what this deck should be, mm -hmm. which is that it is probably realistically a burn strategy. Mm -hmm. And I mean, yeah, between the bomb tokens. And sure. And it goes best with a control deck like runic because they don't care about their battle phase yeah i think runic volcanic is like really good also and i will be playing that deck when it comes out also if you go long enough you can clog up your monsters your opponent's monster zones with bomb tokens yeah yeah you can theoretically it's very cool it is. It is. It's. It's certainly interesting. Uh, bare minimum, um, particularly because it's got a negate. It's got a actually very solid boss monster. He's got 
one of the major things I look for in a boss monster personally, which is uh, more than 3,000 attack. Yeah. He has 3,100. Always a blessing. Always a wonderful thing. Yep. All right. Next week, we are here is where we're getting into the Animation Chronicle Guard. So yes. before it was the Dune, which is Duelist Nexus Free Agents. Then it was the stuff from the, the Volcanics, mm -hmm. which are from the new Duelist pack. Yep. And everything from here on out is Animation Chronicles, unless we say otherwise. Which yeah, yeah. We will have something at the very end that's not Animation Chronicle if they get it translated in time, but we'll see. Yeah, we'll get there when we get there. So, uh, beginning so beginning with, we have some new dinos. More dinos. The dino players are eating good today. So, this is blah, blah, blah. More Raptor stuff. All right, beginning with uh, Kaito Terra. Hellkite Terra is his OCG name. It's got a much cooler OCG name. When dinosaur effect, level 4, 1400 attack, 1000 defense. You can only use the second and third effect of this card's name each once per turn. One, if your opponent controls two or more non-wind face-up monsters. <laughs> That's so specific. Um, those monsters cannot target this card for attacks. Two, during your main phase. During your main phase, you can add polymerization from your deck to your hand. Yo! Two, three. If this card becomes banished, you can special summon it, then add polymerization from graveyard to hand. Yo! What is this? It's the reason that we're going to play Hornsaurus, Dark Dinosaur Fusion Effect Monster, level 6, 2000 attack, 1800 defense. Materials is uh, Kaito, Kaito Terra and one dinosaur or dragon monster. You can only use the first and third effect of this card's name each once per turn. One, if this card is fusion summoned, you can place one field spell from your deck or graveyard face up in your field zone. Yo, what? Uh, Two, can attack directly the turn it is special summoned. Three, during your main phase, you can, immediately after this effect resolves, normal summon one dinosaur or dragon monster. So, when I saw the Transcend Drake... I never considered that fusion dinos, specific polymerization dinos, being a possibility here. So, um, according to Giant Skyhawk, they're so good, LMAO. LMAO. When asked for comment. Um, I would say that the craziest thing about this it's is just... that they're probably going to unban Glow Up Bulb on the next ban list. Do you know what that means? Can you walk me through anything in your head? Walk me through your thought process here. My first thought process is... Hold on. So, normal summon Kaido Terra. Polymerization into Hellhorn Saurus or Horn Saurus. Get your field spell, whatever. Get your normal summon of another dino. And then if you've got a uh, Globe Bulb and Grave, special summon it. Make Ancient Fairy Dragon get another normal summon. Yes. Or even just pop your field spell. Yes. You could do either effect now. Yes. Because you just fetched a free field spell. Yes. Oh you my. are with me. Fetch Gear Town. Pop Gear Town. Special summon Ancient Gear Galgatron Dragon. It's very funny that that's where your brain went with that. <laughs> but I don't think that that's realistically the best. Also. No, no, no. It's funny. When a again. It's funny. When asked for comment. From Giant Skyhawk. It's a consistency boost, adds a ton of utility, and turns Guardian Chimera into a combo enabler. Also yeah. enables play under Lancia. Yeah. Yeah, no, no. Not only that, you can also make the, the dude we were talking about before. Uh, Magnum. Magnum the... the Magnum the... Magnum that we just said is name. I remember Magnum and the... Yeah, Magnum the... Reli this, reliever, Magnum yeah, the Reliever. Yeah, that's it. Magnum the Reliever. Yeah. You can make Magnum the Reliever because he's just a monster from the extra deck plus a monster from your hand. All this Dino support makes me want to relieve my Magnum. <laughs> oh my god! Oh no no no. no no no! Get your polymerization. Normal summon off of this dude. Make Magnum the Reliever by fusing. Uh, horn, <laughs> horned Saurus with another card from your hand. What is this? Ah! Oh, this is so funny is what this is. All right, next card's on you. Oh, my God. 
it makes my brain buzz with what could be with what could be possible. Next up, we have Colorless Chaos King of Dark World. What does the wicked cannon's path of anger, anguished out hatred, and sadness finally lead to? Colorless, apparently. Level 12, Dark Fiend Fusion Effect Monster, question mark attack, question mark defense. Materials, Rainbow Overlord of the Dark World, it's a requirement, plus two or more Fiend Monsters. One, if this card is Fusion Summoned, you can destroy all cards your opponent controls. Bro. Bro! Welcome to, <laughs> welcome to New Dark World support. Yeah. Two, this card's original attack, attack and defense become the number of fusion materials used for a sub in times a thousand. So, minimum 3k. Solid. Three, once per turn, quick effect. You can target a face-up card you control, discard a card, and if you do, your opponent cannot target the targeted face-up card with card effects. It's just another free discard outlet. Because the cost is you target whatever you're targeting. And you know the best part? What? It's fine. Yeah. It's fine it would be the sickest ultimate rare of all time but it's fine yeah it, you're not wrong on that Whew. uh next is a combat wheel this is an earth machine yo synchro oh, hey, effect it's, monster it's the last synchro that they haven't printed from 5ds yet is it yeah i guess that's what it says in the thing yeah so i guess after this they've printed every single synchro that's ever been in the 5d 5ds anime cool uh, level 6, 2,500 attack, 1,200 defense. One tuner, one or more non-tuner monsters. One, The first time this card will be destroyed by an opponent's card effect each turn, it is not destroyed. Nice. Two, once per opponent's battle phase. Quick effect, you can discard one card. This card gains attack equal to half the total attack of all other face-up monsters you currently control. Then place one counter on this card. Also, your opponent's monsters cannot target monsters for attacks this turn except this one. Three. If this card with a counter is destroyed by battle, destroy all other monsters you control. That's hilarious. So if your opponent is still able to run it over, even activating its own effect, you get punished. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's funny. All right. Next, we have some more Animation Chronicles cards. Oh, yes. Uh, so first off, we have Ashoka Pillar, Earth Rock Effect Monster. Z level 3, 0 attack, 2200 defense. It can only use the first effect of this card's name once per turn. One, if this card is summoned, period, you can add an equip spell from your deck to your hand. Then, if this card is in attack position, change it to defense position. So you normal summon this thing in, into face-up defense position, usually. Yeah. Two, if this card is destroyed by a battle card effect, take 2,000 damage. All right. Next, we have Cabrera Stone. Earth Rock Effect Monster, level one, zero attack, zero defense. You can only use the first effect of this card's name once per turn. One, if this card is summoned, you can add one triangle zero from your deck to your hand. Then, if this card is in attack position, change it to defense position. Two, if this card is destroyed by battle or card effect, take a thousand damage. Triangle zero. Normal spell. The card mentioned in the previous card. You can only use one of the first and second effect of this card's name per turn and only once that turn. One, if you control Crystal, Sol Crystal Skull, Ashoka Pillar, and Cabrera Stone, destroy all, car all cards on the field. Also, this turn, your opponent takes any effect damage you would have taken instead. So that's Sick. minimum 3,000 burn. Just <laughs> Two, you can banish this card from your graveyard, then target a Crystal Skull, Ashoka Pillar, and Cabrera Stone in your graveyard. Shuffle them into the deck, then draw three cards. Sick. It it's actually a pretty sick card. Too bad all the other cards are terrible next we have totem pole this is a continuous trap one your opponent cannot target rock monsters you control with zero at original attack with card effects two once per battle when an opponent's monster declares an attack you can negate that attack then place one counter on this card three if this card has three counters send it to the graveyard four if you have three or more monsters with zero attack and different names in your graveyard you can banish this card from your graveyard any effect damage your opponent takes this turn is doubled cool let's <laughs> burn just more burn. It's it's these are not good cards, unfortunately. Burn, baby, burn. All right, next up we have Playmakers cards. The Eternal Hot Dog Question. First first uh first card is the spell card, normal spell, drastic draw, as opposed to destiny draw. 
You can only activate one card with this card's name per turn. You cannot normal summon special monsters the turn you activate this card, except Cyber Monsters. So Cybers only. Fair. Banish all monsters you control. Minimum two. Draw three card. Draw three cards. Hmm. So it's at best a one for one, but you're drawing three deep. True. Hmm. It's, it's not good. It's not linking to the brains where it's like this card's actually good. Yeah. It's playable. Yeah. Next we have transition rollback. This is a normal trap. Oh, it, transaction roll rollback. Oh yeah. Normal trap. Oh. Uh -huh. You can only use one of the first and second effect of this card's name once per turn and only once per that turn. One. Pay half your life points. Then target one normal trap in your opponent's graveyard, except transition roll transaction rollback. This effect becomes that trap card's effect when that card is activated. Oh, that's funny. Punish your opponent for their normal traps. Two. You can banish this card from your graveyard and pay half your life points, then target one normal trap in your graveyard, except transaction rollback. This effect becomes that trap card's effect when that card is activated. Oh. Uh -huh. Yeah, this is bad. I not like it's, like this is this is a good card, but it's bad for the game because cards like Eradicator and Deep yeah, Prison are just, still prevalent cards. Yeah, just get their effects again. Yeah, this is terrible, dude. Hilariously. Hilariously, if it didn't say accept trans accept itself, you could just target a copy of itself to 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 then uh, I think you have to banish for cost and at that point you can't target it because it's not in the graveyard. Uh, no, 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 no. For its on flip effect, target one of your opponent's graveyard. Your opponent has another copy of this card in their graveyard. You just keep you. Just, if it didn't say except oh. itself, you could just plop plop yeah. and just keep copying itself over and over again infinitely. Loops, brother, loops. Oh man, for the simplest one card infinite loop, but they they cut that off. They yeah. cut they cut the head the head of that snake off as soon as it left the burrow. All right, next we have code hack. This is a continuous trap card. One, Cyber's Link monsters you control cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects. Neat. Two, once per turn during the battle step, if your opponent's or if your monster battles an opponent's monster, you can change that opponent's monster's attack to zero until the end of this turn. And if you do, neither monster can be destroyed by that battle. Also, neither player takes battle damage from that battle. So, all your Cyber's Link monsters become. No, no, your monsters just kind of become um, a faster version of Armor Master. Sort of, yeah. Three, when your opponent activates a card or effect during the damage step while your Code Darker monster attacks, you can banish this card from your graveyard, negate the activation, and if you do, the attacking monster gains 700 attack. Duh. Yay, pack filler. All right, next up, we have Fusion Reinforcement, which has, like... Oh, they're revealing Mirage Knight to su to summon out the Flame Swordsman. Ah, okay. Uh, that's what's happening in the artwork. I just now noticed the Mirage Knight behind him in the yeah, artwork. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, okay, you can only activate one card with this card's name per turn. One, reveal a fusion monster in your extra deck, and if you do, special summon one of the fusion materials mentioned on from your extra deck or graveyard. But then until the end of your opponent's turn, it cannot attack. Also, its effects are negated. So it's fusion deployment, but better. Hilariously, my brain immediately went because it because the uh, one specific card was already like at the forefront of my brain. Made me go reveal Extergo, summon Beast, activate Runic Tip, activate Effective Beast and negate Runic Tip, pay cost mill two. Beast resolves negated Runic Tip to Runic Tip resolves. Activate another one, effect to negate mill two. True. So you're not negating any of your spell cards, but you can just mill as much just as you want. Keep milling. You can do the same thing to your opponent's turn. Just keep milling. I yeah. I, I can't first. Not even necessarily runic. Just any spell heavy deck, and I can't think of any anymore that could re that would just love to just get free mills from their spells. Yeah, I don't know of a ton of decks that would just profit off the free mills that run that many spells. Potentially some kind of a tier limit strategy, but maybe. I know Kashtiro runs a ton of spells. In Runic, it would be interesting because you could potentially fill your graveyard with, ne with Naturias and Runics, but like... And then just shuffle all the Runic spells back. Right, with Fountain to draw. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Um, it's certainly interesting. 
Uh, and and somebody smarter than us will probably figure out a way to break this card. Yeah. All right. Next, we have some very newly announced cards, which yes. is some Red Dragon Archfiend support. So this is from the new structure deck, Pulse of the King. So we're going to start off with a Scar Red Dragon Archfiend. Dark Dragon Synchro Effect Monster, 3,000 attack, 2,500 defense, one tuner, one or more non-tuner dark monsters. You can only use the second effect of this card's name once per turn. One, this card's name becomes Red Dragon Archfiend while face up on the field or in the graveyard. Okay. Two, if this card is sent from the monster zone to the graveyard, you can special summon one Red Dragon Archfiend from your extra deck. This is treated as a Synchro Summon. Good. Then, if this card was sent to the graveyard as Synchro Material for a Dark Dragon Synchro Monster, you can destroy all opponent's attack position monsters. So basically, if you're going up into one of Red Dragon Archfiend's upgraded forms, like Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss, or, or King Bane, or whatever. It also lets you nuke the field. Just Rege free Regeki. Yeah. On top of that. That's ridiculous. Uh, next up, we have Soul Resonator. Fire Fiend Tuner Effect Monster. Level 3, 500 attack, 200 defense. You can only use the first and second effects of this card name each once per turn. If this card is normal or special summoned, add a level 4 lower fiend monster from deck to your hand, except another copy of itself. Also, you cannot special monster from the extra deck, except Dark Synchro Monsters for the rest of this turn. Pretty solid. Uh, yeah. Two, if a card you control will be destroyed by a card effect while you control Red Dragon Archfiend or a Synchro Monster that mentions it, you can banish this card from the graveyard instead. So this, it also applies protection to your Red Dragon Archfiend monsters. Right. Nice. Next we have Bone Archfiend. A Dark Fiend Effect Monster. Level 4, 1800 attack, 0 defense. You can only use the first and second effect of this card's name each once per turn. One. If this card is in your hand or graveyard, you can send one other card from your hand or field to the graveyard. Special summon this card. Also, you cannot special summon monsters from the extra deck for the rest of this turn, except dark synchro monsters. Two, you can target one face-up monster you control. Send one fiend tuner from your hand or deck to the graveyard, and if you do, increase or decrease that target's level by one. Interesting. Yeah, that's... Um, I don't know how to feel about these cards yet. Granted, we don't really have all of them yet, so we yeah. don't know exactly, you know, how good the rest of the support coming in this deck is going to be. Yeah, because like the, that's the only three cards. So with the Bone Arch thing, what they really should have done is increase by one, because then you can just normal summon the Soul Resonator, search him, special him, use his effect to bump him up to one. Boom, Red Dragon Arch Fiend. Yeah, off of a normal summon, which is impressive. All right, well, we actually got through all of the newly revealed cards pretty quickly. We got through them in good time. Normally, we take a lot longer for new cards. Normally, the new cards are good, so we have things to talk Oof. about. <laughs> that yeah. was mean. No, I mean, it's true, right? Because so, yeah. there's a ton of pack filler here. Yeah, it's it was all, not only was there like a ton of fat pack filler, the cards that are good are also exceedingly complicated, I guess, would be the best way to put it. Yeah, like, I think like they're that... not They don't read broken, but at the same time, you know something is there. Yeah, I think the volcanic stuff is particularly good. I think that's way better than people initially give it credit for. I think that there's, and also, we don't have all of them yet. There's at least one missing because the card numbers skip. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, oh, yeah, 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 no, so there's still one more. And like I said, they read fair, like a little too fair. Just a lot of burn, and that's about it. But. That's a big button, I cannot lie. They do give a ton of consistency to the deck, in my opinion. Uh, oh, yeah. So much. Particularly just get, being able to set a Blaze Accelerator spell card directly from your deck by getting rid of one you've already utilized. Yeah. So... I mean, I mean, because this, I mean, because this will let you switch between volcanic uh, blades accelerator and regular blades accelerator. You can just keep every turn. You can just keep switching the two back and back between the two of them. Is blades accelerator hard once per turn? I do not know. I don't even remember what the original blades accelerator did. It's been so, that long. Uh, I'll let you look that up. But I while we're here, I do want to answer some mailbag questions. We've gotten a couple. And I think that we have time this episode. We should do it. What do you say? Yeah, sure. Uh, send a pirate type monster with 500 less attack from your hand to the graveyard. Destroy a card your opponent controls. Non-targeting. 
but you cannot declare an attack during attack during this turn if you do. Yeah. Go. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, mailbag questions. Yeah. What do you think about Konami splitting up spell trap searches in archetypes? Uh, Wheel and Madam Spider, Unicorn and Ogre, Shinonomi and a future trap searcher. Do you think this design philosophy is a good evolution to carry forward or should it be taken on a case by case basis? I think it should be on a case by case basis. But like the examples it gave were, gave were all great examples of where that's a good thing. Um, I would say that there's a good example of where it works just fine, which is Swordsoul. Another, where it lets you search any Chi Shao lets you search any sorts of card, which I don't think is a bad thing. But then on the other side of that, you have Marincess. Yeah, which search where they have uh C Angel to search the spell, any spell. Yeah. But then they have Coral Triangle to search any trap. Yeah, and I like that specifically for Marincess because that gives them the ability to get more out of their link monsters. And because they have so many link monsters and they do so much link climbing, that extra utility built into their link monsters is really critical. So I like it a lot. Well, just on a case by case basis. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Which is what I, which is what I was saying. Particularly like with Sword Soul, where there's not a whole lot of just play this monster, play this monster, get a new one, play this monster, play this monster, make a new one, take these two monsters I just made, make another one. Yeah, it doesn't climb as much as it just presents itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's summon a monster, get a synchro. Summon a different monster, get another synchro. Right, right, right. As opposed, uh, yeah, as opposed to like you had said, climbing, which a lot of decks do. It's it's definitely interesting between climbing into your boss monsters or just presenting them. It's definitely a fascinating uh case study. Case study. Next, do you think more decks at the same power level as tier would be a good thing or a bad thing? Um, I think as base level tier is like fine, I guess. Yeah, but, but then, I, th I think once you start getting into like full tier Shizu, it starts yeah. becoming a problem. Particularly because that that became about due to non tier stuff. Like if it's exclusively an archetype, I'm fine with it. But then you also got to be real careful with your non archetypal stuff that accidentally have really good synergy with it. Yeah, for sure. Um, tier being the best example, but another kind of funny example i believe would be uh i literally just thought of it and now it's gone crap i'm kind of curious myself now is it like are you like looking for a very complicated deck that people... no, no no it was it was like a specific example and now it, like rise i was about to say it, it example of what like a deck that where the deck itself is fine but then like not non archetypal stuff kind of accidentally have had really good synergy with it and could just slide in and just it sounds like sprite maybe i think sprite in archetype is like no. really fair but the issue is that it's an extremely splashable engine into yeah. any deck that has more than one level two monster yeah yeah that it wasn't sprite specifically it was something else but it is another great example of you know any level two archetype that spams becomes a problem mm -hmm. because of sprites not because of sprite but it depends on which 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 direction you look at from. If you look at from it from sprites, they're the problem. If you look at from it from the other cards, sprites the problem. Yeah, and then I, you end up with the Spider Man situation. Yeah, I. <laughs> <laughs> Where they're both pointing at each other. That caught me off guard. I <laughs> that one caught me off guard. I had to think about that for a second. That's yeah. funny. Yeah, I think that you end up in a in that situation sometimes, but I don't necessarily think it's a terrible thing. I think that the synergies between different archetypes and between different decks are a cool thing. Yeah. I do think though that sometimes it can just end up being too much. So it's very easy for that kind of thing to just go off the rails and cause yeah. it and be horrific. Uh, yeah. again with Ishizu Tier Lament. All right. Well, I think that that is going to wrap us up for today's episode a little bit early. Yeah. But, um, I mean, we, I think we'll be fine. I mean, how many cars should we cover? Probably 20. Yeah. Again, normally we talk a lot more about them, but there wasn't a whole lot to talk about. 
with these cards because most of them are kind of pack filler. Also, we knew that as soon as like right before we started recording, mm -hmm. there would they we they announced the Red Dragon Archfiend support. Yeah, yeah. But we didn't know how much it was gonna be or how many cards. We, and we wanted to give time in case it was like, yeah, here's like the entire structure deck with like five or six brand new cards. I I was half expecting it to be literally like eight cards. Yeah, because previous structure decks have been like. Like six to eight cards is like yeah. not that uncommon. Yeah, and they only gave us like three. Yeah, so Which worries me a little bit. I think yeah, there's there's definitely more coming. Mm. We just have to wait on it. But that's what worries me is, are they going to release something horrific? No, I think that the that first card that we read is probably going to be like oh, the the main. Oh yeah the card. the new the new Red Dragon Archfiend form. Well, I don't know. I say that it does feel like it, like an accessory card, right? Like it does yeah. feel like, like normally when they do a new structure like this, they center it around one new main boss monster. Yeah, and this is the boss monster, but the boss monster itself, this should be because it's on the cover. It feels like a puzzle piece, not yeah, because it's specifically because it, it's like specifically stating, "Hey, I'm Red Dragon Archfiend," but also if you fuse me into something that is for Red Dragon Archfiend. I do other stuff. Right. So it, then it's like, but then that means you're not the boss monster. It would be whatever, you know, whatever you're going up into. And then, but then it's like, which one are they going up into for the structure deck? Cause they're not going to just release a structure deck and not get, let, not make it possible in structure deck to go, to not use the full effect of, it feels like the Kaiba structure deck from like 2016 that gave us A, B, and C. And then it's like, oh, well, we have A, B, and C now, but like we need something to do with them. And then like a week later, we get A, B, C, Dragon Buster. Oh. Like it feels like that's kind of the situation here. Maybe. Where they're releasing like the side pieces and then later they're going to release the, the the bomb. The main card. Yeah. The, yeah. So. Interesting. Maybe. And, uh, I don't, and I don't know if that's what happened with A, B, and C, but I'm, I'm saying that's how it feels. Like, I feel like we're getting individual pieces rather than the full package, package of here. whatever they're... Which, to be fair, that thing by itself is already, I'm going to board wipe you and then pump out a targeted negate, Omni negate. Yeah, yeah. For just... And that that's just a hot red dragon archfiend abyss. And even then, in a deck like Dragon Link, who runs Rocket uh, Synchron... If you can get into that thing and then send to the graveyard without normal summoning, you just go normal summon Synchron, boom, hot red dragon fiend abyss and a board wipe. Yeah, and that's not an unreasonable thing to do. Because yeah, because I mean the because like Dragon Link already did that. Yeah. But with um Borload Savage on the crackback, and they and they would also do it with a uh, Chaos Ruler and then revive Chaos Ruler. Right. All right, well, that's going to wrap it up for today's episode. Let's go ahead and thank all of our wonderful patrons. So a yeah. huge thank you to Not So Close, Coder, Cam Yang, Kane <laughs> Martin, Cypheris, Cards Goetia, Earth Machine, Best Deck, Epi, Has Anyone Actually Read Toy Vendor, HH Cyber, I'm Lincoln. If All You Have Is a Cosmic, Every Problem Looks Like a Floodgate, John Leal, Monstertron, Mountain Man, Oatmeal Spaghetti, Owen Alvarado, Seto Kawaiba. <laughs> I love that. That's so. That's awesome. <laughs> that's so awful. I love it. Yeah. Silver Hope, Unbanned Number Ninety Five, Konami. Understanding and reading are two mm -hmm. different things. Virtually Savior's World, Rogue and Tier Two are the polite terms for bad deck. Aaron Gardner, Asami, Ashless Chaps, Atsuyo, Simp at the Silver Castle, Blackwing, Silver Rim, The Ascendant is the best Floodgate. Box Wine, come on and get your game on. Duty Booty, Dragon Maidenless Behavior, Dragon Maid Stunzied. I'm about to reek a glamour tribute for Crossies plant nuts in your mouth. Can I'm the hockey walkie slash mixer, old man red pin code one four three, slaking it up and valence hojo mama. Thank you all for your continued support. And of course, if you want to catch that extra episode every week, you can join in the at the Patreon five dollar and up tier. And if you're not too worried about the extra episode, you just want to show your general support, you can do that for as little as one dollar a yep. month. And that will give you access to the uh, to the episodes uh, <clears throat> twelve hours early, the audio oh, version. Yeah, I forgot about that. So yeah. I don't know. We have I forgot to mention that. Uh, yeah. So like Caleb said, the audio <laughs> versions of the podcast will be available on Patreon now. Uh, and yeah, like you said, twelve hours ish. Yeah, roughly. I try. I try. I, I do my best. Basically, as soon as we get done editing the audio version, we just yeah, I throw it up there and tell it post now go. Yeah. So, just, uh, yeah. the evening before. Yeah, for sure. Uh, whenever we whenever we have the chance. Yeah. So, 
Uh, but with all of that said, I think that we're going to go ahead and wrap it up for today. Thank you all so much for <laughs> listening. We hope you have a great weekend, everyone, and wish us luck at yet another regionals this weekend. Take care, everybody.